All right, we're live. So let's see. What I want to show you is uh, basically let's preface what's going to happen here, what we're trying to do. Uh, let me show the, the browser. Uh, hold on a sec. Let me get it back to shrink the window in a bit because it's too wide for the resolution. Okay. So this is a GitHub keyboard PCB guide. It talks about using KiCad and borrowing, you know, components like uh, and, and their and their footprint on the PCB from libraries made by Hasu and, and, and another guy. I need to memorize his name or learn about him. Sorry about that. But uh, so I'm heading that way. I want to learn how to maybe make a PCB. And now I'm going to tell you why. Let's get out the board we're going to play with today. It is got a sticker that says Delphi on the top left, but it's actually made by Maxi Switch, and it's a uh, Maxi Switch dome with slider. So even though it's old, in fact, let's look. We'll look up the date and kind of see what's going on here. But uh, it's got crappy. Oh, it's Maxi Switch dome with slider. So. Uh, from what I understand, these can be used on Cherry MX boards, the, the keycaps, but let's see, these, but Cherry MX keycaps cannot be put on here typically, or switch, uh, these can, keycaps can be used on Cherry MX switches, but the Cherry MX keycaps might not or probably won't work on here because they'll run into the, the circular tube part, so it's sort of half compatible, I guess, with Cherry MX, but that's sort of beside the point. Um, let's see. I have the one of the ideas I have for restoring old keyboards is you know it started with the fact that you can clean them and then you can also ultra bright them and then that's I've done a little bit of that and uh, now I'm heading towards I want to Cerakote cases uh, to give them new colors and now I'm on to this idea that I can actually maybe replace you know basically the quality of this keyboard is excellent the case is actually pretty clean the uh it's heavy so i think we'll find a nice plate inside um so the qual build quality is great so why not just swap out the pcb in there with a cherry mx or an alps pcb so this i'm going to take this apart and then i'm going to try to get you know looking for samples of something that would actually want to make a new PCB with Cherry MX or Alps in it. And so this one, I like the layout a lot. This is my first candidate for something that would do that. I wish you could feel how heavy this is. It's gorgeously weighty. In fact, I was going to wait. Another idea I had is uh, waiting some... This is from 1992, Maxi Switch Mexico, 127.92. But it's deliciously heavy. Uh, one, we could do some fun here. I got a scale from uh, UW Surplus. Let me see if I can. There it is. Uh, I guess the, the camera might not be able to read it right. And I actually, I, I don't know if this keyboard will be too heavy for it. Here's here's what it looks like. Uh, pretty ancient. It'll go up to 500 grams so since keywords typically weigh over a kilogram i'm going to say this isn't going to work is it yeah maxed it out okay i do want to work on a scale where i can actually show that i'd like to see i think one piece of data that'd be kind of fun is the progression of weight so we know keyboards went from quality to cheap and horrible and I claim I'm starting to, I think I can almost feel like, okay, this was this range of years because roughly speaking, it just get lighter and crappier over time as we go. This one feels quality and old. And so it's one I'd be willing to invest some time in. So um, since we're going to take it all down, tear it down, I guess we'll start with uh, removing keycaps because I'll give them a cleaning. And like I said, maybe I'll want to reuse the set somewhere else later on a Cherry MX board, not necessarily a maxi switch. Um, 
Doma slider. Let's see, I do have some other Maxi Switch Doma slider. I can see all my keyboards over on the right. Let me see if I can find the other ones and tell you what they are and why I have them. Oh yeah, no, that, no those are NMB Doma slider, the apples. Um, I do have one though, where is it? Uh, there it is. Uh, Gateway 2000 Any Key is also a Maxi Switch Doma slider. So, you know, minimally, maybe some parts could be interchanged between these, this board and that board. But like I said, I'm more interested in, this is a beautiful, this one's clean and pretty to me. Sometimes I wonder if I'm a little bit jaded because uh, I watched Voden's videos from Germany and he's always got the cherry G80s. And I'm starting to, they're starting to suit my eye. I don't have it. He's lucky they're all pumping out of Germany there, but I don't see many over here in the U.S. at all. But so I might have to ask him if he can trade me some. But so I'm saying, I'm wondering, I don't really know my layouts very well or my, the lines, but this feels and looks like those. And uh, the, everything is, everything about it is for some reason uh, pleasing to me. So uh, I'm interested in restoring, using this as, Giving it new life, so either Cerakote color. Oh, uh, I know I'm bouncing around on topics, but I would like to see if I can show the Cerakote color. Like, I like this Delphi blue. Um, it's just a sticker, and but still, uh, I was wondering, one of the Cerakote colors I got was kind of midnight blue. If you can find it, uh, here it is. Um, Oops, here's my Cerakote starter kit. So let's see if I, yeah, the colors are in here. Let's see how, I guess you can't really tell, but this is navy blue uh, on the left. So what if the case was that color? And this is maybe, in my mind, I'm like, well, what if the original boards and the original, like, I know OEM makes something for some company and this one's just a sticker. So it's like some lab company maybe, I don't know. And it's not very really quality. It's just a, a maybe a you know, glue on the back and what on the front, maybe plastic or whatever. But uh, it, you know, maybe kind of leaving them in their original state other than mod like, in other words, leave this here, but the color around it would augment it. But, that's kind of what I was thinking. So I might try the Cerakote blue on this one. Maybe blue. We'll see. When I, um, kind of waiting for warmer weather to Cerakote outside. Uh, I know I have to worry about wind and, air and, and particles in the air, but I really just don't have space and don't really want to try it. In, I don't have an indoor space, let's say. So I'm not quite sure yet, but I've been gathering all the things I need to be able to do it. I'm close. I saw, some, I was kind of reading some of the forums on Cerakote coding. this one guy had bought like a garment rack. You need stuff to hang while you're spraying it. And uh, this garment rack's like $12 from Amazon. So I think I'll be buying that. I need the hooks that let you, that you hang the, the parts on. So keyboards, it's, in, you know, I don't, did I just scratch it? No. Uh, you know, I gotta be able to hang the top and bottom while I'm spray painting it. And so we're gonna find a, a way and a place to hang it. So hangers and little like, I don't know, clamps to hold something. If there's, if there's stuff on the back that I could clamp onto, that's the best thing to hang it by because that's not gonna, it doesn't, that doesn't need to get painted. But if I have to like hang it in a corner of this area, let's say like this corner, then it's chances are you it wouldn't spray where the hanger's holding it. So you can see the the dilemmas there but uh, maybe when we open this one we'll keep an eye on that if i remember when i get that far so for now we'll just get the keycaps off and then we'll take the case apart and see what's inside this feels like plastic so it's heavy so i assume there's a plate metal plate underneath somewhere I guess it was shocking to me that there's domes with sliders like, you know, 30 years ago. And I guess maybe it shouldn't be shocking. Like the industry evolved from expensive designs to cheaper ones. And so maybe the domes, the rubber dome ones back then were 
more solidly built, but then they realize, oh, that's cheap to make, and so they just kept making them cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Oh. Yes, this is Doma Slider. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see when we get look at it. I, I don't, can't remember if I took apart the gateway, but we'll get a peek inside here and see what this, this one looks like. Oh, these are double shot keycaps, which, uh, by the way, and let's, uh, let's take a look at my, um, at the microscope and see what, what they look like under that. So here's zero on the three. Here's what the double shot looks like from the bottom. Did it, that one says 15. I was wondering, I don't know, I haven't read anything about what it means when you, why there's maybe numbering or lettering in, the, in, in there. So 6 and 15 doesn't mean anything to me, but I don't know what it means to somebody. All right, back to our overhead. Uh, let me see what's going on here. Yeah, okay. We'll keep taking it apart. My wife and daughter are in Hawaii at the moment. My son's next to me here, but a little jealous. They're in the sunshine at the beach, Waikiki. They're right there for a volleyball tournament, so I am missing out for sure. It would be a fun event. It sure would. I get to go to lots of the other events though, so I wanted my wife to have one solo with my daughter. This was a good one because I got to go out of town next week to Montana. Anyways, so, oh, I got to be careful. I, I tend to break stuff, by the way, when I, especially when I get around these kinds. So we got some uh, sliders here. I'm trying to see what... Some lint and dirt in there. Uh, oh, I came out. Maybe there's no, not really. Oh, yeah. I gotta keep be careful. I don't, I don't recognize the slider currently, but uh, I always like seeing the different styles of sliders. Let me get in, get in there. I should say the slider ones to last or. It's kind of looking like we might not be able to take it out till we take the case apart, but I can't remember. I haven't taken enough of them apart, or I suppose each one could be different, where some require you to take the case apart first, but I guess I would have assumed I can get out the sliders from the top here and not have to take the case apart to get, get them out of there. I'm getting that beautiful new my Grove Made task knife in the pick. And use that to open boxes when they come. It's a nice desk piece made out of a solid piece of brass, carved down, and I enjoy it. Okay, oh, I forgot. I said I wasn't going to do this, but I just did it again. Let's look at these under the uh, microscope, see if there's anything interesting. I wonder if the yellowing is like some lubricant that was on them. Kind of looks like it. This yellow blob right here on this side and the other one up, up here looks a little yellow too. But interesting. Okay, back to overhead. clean separation from the function keys like this gap is so wide and like they literally just embedded in their little trays there it's maybe it's that's what's maybe that's part of what's pleasing to me is this case is so thick like I mean it goes down like half an inch something like that
even though they're double shot, they're very thin on the and here, by the way, they clink. They sound like empty pistachio shells. Uh oh. And then F11, I pulled out the slider. Didn't know that was going to happen. <clears throat> I'm not sure what I got to grab onto that. Let me see what I got in the toolbox. Yeah, I should be able to do it. Uh -oh. There we go. There's a, a, a slider, slider dome. Might as well look at it under the microscope since we got one part. All right. Here's what it looks like on its side. Here's the bottom view. So that's just going to push down on, you guessed it, uh, rubber dome. Let's see if I can sneak that under here while we're here. Uh, let's see. I can. This is what it looks like, but as I focus, let's see if I can. Uh, Get it closer. <laughs> There's our microscope looking at that down, rubber dome. Cool. All right, back to the task at hand. That was interesting. What's keeping these in there? I guess they're the bottom wall of the uh, the black part must have something that's catching them. Yeah, it's got a nav cluster. It's got num. Yeah, this is a nice nice keyboard. It's got some green, so we'll check out the. I don't think it's triple shot. Like here's one that's pause and break. I'll save it because it's it's got the writing on the side. That's pad printed or something because it's not on the wall of the. Thing. We'll look under a microscope at that one. Yeah, let's take out one of these alts and it's green and deal with it. Do it right now. Oh yeah, just green underneath. So let's go back to our microscope. And now that I'm back on the View here, and here's there's the pause and the break, and here's the alt. Doesn't look too green. I guess the lighting's poor, but I bet you notice it when we flip it over. And yeah, the light's reflecting too much, I guess. Yeah, green and black. Cool. Uh, so might as well take this one out. Oops. I wonder if these broke. I don't know. I tend to break break more than my fair share of slider mechanisms. Part of it, <clears throat> I claim, isn't my fault because keyboards are 30 years old. They're designed, the keycaps and things will go forever and the switches, but the sliders, there's often just this little tiny piece of plastic holding it there, and man, after 30 years, I'll tell you what, those things break on me, I don't know, 60-70% of the time. They rarely survive me taking the keycaps off, but not that I'm the most gentle, but I'm just saying <clears throat> it's the most fragile part of a 30-year-old board is the little part that holds this, the sliders, or the... Uh, the stabilizer's bar in place. Thank you, Keycap, for flipping yourself right into the pile without having to make me do it. Whoops. 
Give it a shot that one. Okay, we're getting down to the things that have sliders. More likely than not. Okay. Man, this just fall out of there or what? Look at, oh god, I think I'll leave that dust bunny on there so you can see what I'm dealing with here. And then we'll look at maybe what the mechanism is and whether it broke. It doesn't feel like, I mean, it can't all be broke. I mean, I suppose they could, but uh, I don't think so, though. Hmm. Uh, let's try this one. Yeah, okay, just the center. This one's interesting. It has room for three, but they only needed, they only used one. I didn't try how it felt, but since they're so big, I think it's right. Possibly didn't need stabilization. I guess I agree. Let's see here. Same with this, yep. Pretty much they all have three stems in them. Or posts, or I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Same here, three down to the enter and the space bar. Okay, what do, what do you think's under here? Oh, just one big one, isn't that crazy? Well, and the oh, and the where the stabilizer goes. So like I said, these pieces, whatever they are, tend to fall off. So I'm going to see if I can get one up here for you to... I don't quite get what they're doing, but... But I know I can kind of remove them. So I'm going to start... We'll look under the microscope, but I'm going to start saving those on the tree here. Because they're super tiny and they're going to get lost if we don't do something with them. So, so that's these four are gone. And these two are sitting here, but let me get one on here. Oh, they don't look like they can go anywhere. They can't, it's not like they're gonna fall into a hole. So, three, they're just laying there kind of. So no, they can't be laying there. I think they attach and then, uh, I have no idea. Let's see. So none were over here. One, two, three. I see all six of those pieces. Now we just gotta deal with our space bar. Yeah, I'm the worst at space bars. Oh, just blew the dirt down inside. I'm gonna get out my magnifying glass so I can see. If I can take those uh, stabilizer, stabilizers off, just maybe clip up and out here. I, I can, but it, they're grabbing it. But they're, I guess I'll leave them there. For, but so remember, I was saying the smallest part is what breaks. Well, on this particular thing, man, I'm trying to pry it out, and it's not gently coming out. So those, whatever they did, they made those they made lasting a long time. Uh, space bar, <clears throat> what are we going to do? As usual, I'm kind of impatient, so, oh, there we go. Uh, so it's just the one, and what's going on here? Okay, here we can see the use of these little black things. Um, I have to find the, like, shift keys to see if they had this, but we know we saw it on the enter that there was these, 
these holes and that's what stabilizers go in. So I assume if we found an enter, we would see that as well. Not a caps lock. Where's, where's another? Where is it? Maybe this one, yeah. So, or shift, I meant, did I say? Yeah, <clears throat> shift keys. Yeah, so when they have that, there should be one more. Might as well find it since we're on the prowl. Oh, there it is. Wow, that's an extra wide one. So these are all our ones with stabilizers. And this one has uh, the black piece still in it. So that slides in it and it lets the metal slide the slide in from the side to hook it. So we're gonna switch over to microscope and look a little better and gross you guys out with some detritus. Alright, I just wanted you to see that. I don't know why. Gross you out, I guess. Yeah, so they just look like what do they look like? Can't get enough light in there, can I? Let me see if I put it on my hand, if we can do something here. Let's... I'm trying to see if there's maybe writing on it. So I'm gonna flip this one over and do it again. Let's see if we can get some in. Yeah, I'm not seeing much there. It has some of that yellowish color, like there was some lube there that holds them in there somehow. Or, yeah. I don't know. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're missing one because it's in, in here. Let's see if I can get a side view going of why this worked. So it's buried in there and then the stabilizer bar was in that. Okay, back to overhead. Uh, I wanna get that guy out of there. Let's see if I got the right tool for the job somewhere. for some pliers with something on the end, but in the absence of that, maybe this can go in the hole and just pry it out, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, come into focus, there you go. There we go. Well, that's keycap removal. It's kind of got some interesting aspects to it. Let me put my tool back away if I can figure out how. Oh, yes, it goes in this way. Okay, um. This is where normally I would bag the, bag the put those keycaps in a bag. Oops, yeah. Let me figure that out. Here's some bags. Just get a bag. Let's forget about my coffee over here. I better not how many songs or YouTube will take down take down the video for copyright violations. I had that happen on one of my videos. My wife there my wife and my daughter were playing Christmas songs clear in the other room and <clears throat> way in the background and then YouTube flagged it. It was kinda of dumb. I think I had to go into Final Cut Pro and get rid of the audio for that segment or lower it or I forget what I did, but it was pretty bad. A pretty weak sauce. I actually had this theory, like, why can't I buy, why can't I pay the royalty? They say, you're not paying royalty. Well, how much are they? Let me click a button and pay. Maybe I want 
what is the price you're trying to charge me to play that song in my video? Everyone always wants like royalty free, but no, I want actually good songs and that are ones that I would choose. So why can't I do that? Pay for them. Probably is a way and I just don't know what it is, but I've looked once and I didn't really see a way yet, but I assume they'll get that going at some point. All right, uh, yeah. I don't really want to get the vacuum out yet, but uh, let's see if I can just get the major chunks. There's only a few, I guess. So. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's kind of weird that I can't pry those out. Let me get one more tug on the on, on one of these and see if I can. Without breaking it. I guess just a decent tug will do it. When I had my magnifying glasses on, on I could see the direction to pull that pulls it out of the plastic that's holding it. But, so I suppose we could take a look after this and see if I broke any, but I think so far so good, I'm guessing. It's just a light tug. Having this hold on to it makes it easier though. I should, might as well, put those in their little bag, so let me see what we got here. Where are my little bags? There's one. Alright, this is might be too long. Let's see. Definitely want to put these little guys in there. These three will fit nicely. Is this one going to fit? Uh, I don't think so, but we can try. Oh, it does fit. Yay. Okay. Put that with the key caps and label it later, a bit later. We've got our one slider that came out. All right. Let's uh, start taking some screws out, shall we? Okay. Yeah, Phillips on the larger side. Some big old Phillips screws. One, two, three, four, five of them. Let me get a big Phillips. This I don't think is my big one. This one's bigger. This one might be just right. Oh yeah. These are big old screws. The last few keyboards I've done are tiny, tiny ones, so it's kind of interesting to see these big daddies. Don't have a magnetic tip on this one, so I'll have to tip it over to get them out of here. I hope we don't lose them. Let's try just a little shake or dake. Okay, I see two of them, but not the middle one, so I probably didn't, maybe it's longer, or maybe I didn't, I don't know, huh? Yeah, it's not bad.
Come on. Oh, there it is. Okay, good. Well, uh, how is this going to click apart? There's something holding, there's an invisible screw right here. So I've dealt with that enough that I can believe it for sure. Let me get the box. Well, let's try the test knife, see if I can handle it. It's right here. Wrecking some of the the date on this thing, but what can you do, you know? That's the same kind of screw. So you can tell it wasn't tampered with, but now it's about to be. Alright. <coughs> that should do it. There's our sixth screw. And, oh, voila, I heard something jingle jangle, but, uh, all right, here's the inside bottom. Set that aside. We got feet that are coming out with springs on them nicely, I guess. Uh, I didn't take good note of how they, how they, I guess they just fit in there and spring down and out. Yeah. Okay. Um, since I could possibly lose those, I think I'll bag them. Maybe these four pieces. Oh, I'll save them up here and try and get a bag for that stuff. Um, here's our keyboard, or our, um, cable. No, I thought I'd see a plug to something to unplug, but I guess we're older than that. So these are, these are, uh, soldered into the PC, the controller board. <clears throat> Let's see if I learned anything from DMA. Let me put my light, my, my magnifying glass on and see what... Component side switch, Tachian, C H I E N, Maxi Switch Inc. <clears throat> says that on the PCB. And an Intel 1980 for this P chip, uh, the biggest one. Not see it. Oh, the, oh, those are ribbon cables. Okay, so we'll see more. That's connecting this to the other side. I wonder what the job of this board is. This one's a P9142, this is a P8051AH1138, and it says 9147, I don't know what those mean, they're probably supposed to, maybe P means, I don't know what P means, <clears throat> I'm starting to learn, but, okay, is there anything, okay, well, let's take off some more big old screws, they're not quite as big, so, Let's try the next notch down, like this screwdriver. This works. There we go. One. Two. Three. This says LED one, LED two, LED three, so what else we got? Uh, a small capacitor, a bigger capacitor. This is cool that it says Maxi Switch. The logo looks pretty cool. Oh, and I also read, or the, the guy that was doing the KeyCAD uh, talk says there's usually a notch cut out so that It'll show you where pin one would be here, but it's also marked on the PCB, which he recommended doing. So I guess I am learning a little bit. Oh yeah, so this is the 
LCDs. Okay, so this is all its job is to go out to the to the computer. So the matrix is coming in here. So I imagine we'll see some more when we get underneath here. Um, let's see if I can take these out. Oh, I don't know how they clamp in there actually, but they just they just pulled them out. They're gripped, I guess, by the. So now we have you know our our. Uh, it's actually not a bad cable. Uh, a little dirty, but the coil's pretty much intact, and it's just a nice three-footer, so it might be, this thing slides the ferrite ring, I guess, uh, it was on the inside of the keyboard. I'm going to set this aside. No, we forgot to look. Oh, I guess we can look. Let's, let's uh, show you the, some of the writing on here. Right, Maxi Switch Ink, PCB, and here's more of the board so this should say it says black and white and red and green uh, on the motherboard that's interesting okay now let's flip it over and see what we got on this side we got our three leds See if we can get them to come into focus. There we go. LED one, two, and three. And uh, the solder side from Maxi Switch. Okay. All right. I'll put this aside. Okay. Well, there's still stuff rolling around in there. Oh, here. No, I hear it, but. Oh, yeah. It's just the plate. Uh, screws that go on the plate. Yeah. I guess I'll get the tray out to show you. Um, so typically these things go inside, you know, like slots, but. Apparently we haven't seen where yet, but these came out of somewhere, probably on the, we're still yet to unscrew enough to see it. But this is worth talking about. Uh, you know, this is holding something up and this is holding something up. Uh, this probably just goes, touches this plate in the right spot. So it angles up and then it drops off so that the, I guess the, that circuit board can fit probably in this space. But, uh, so this is an example of like if I was gonna Cerakote this, I can I'd clamp onto this and then hang it, you know, grab onto this and then hang it vertically and then spray paint it, and uh, that lets me spray the whole side. I'd mask this off and try to fix this again a little bit. Um, okay, wow. Now we're down to these look like rivets, the these kind, but we still have some more screws too. But let me get my magnifying. No, nope, those are. Little tiny, tiny, uh, uh, little tiny hooks. Yeah, I need my next notch down. Cool, we've used all three sizes here. Um, I think I have four, so, anyways, probably could have used that. Let's see. This one. Oh yeah, it's just oh he doesn't like this. So yeah, I think we're on this medium one. Just gotta get him. Uh oh, is it something that needs to be between? Maybe I'm not finding the center. Jeez. This is the guy that I need to use. These are super tiny. I'm debating whether to. I think I'll bag these. I'll bag the littlest ones separate so they don't get all lost in the shuffle. So. This is our basic six outer ones that let us take the plates apart and then the 
maybe four little smaller screws that held the daughter board, I guess, or part of the controller where the where the uh, cable is attached to. Um, I think we'll keep going. I don't know how many of these there are, but oh, here's four so far. Wow. Okay. Not sure where those were. Maybe we'll be able to spot it in the video. Um, you know, I got lots of bags, so I'm just going to keep going through these guys. Make separate bags, why not? So that like minded parts and sizes are just together, I guess. Springs in here for the feet of the keyboard. They feel a little dry and crusty, but I wonder how you're supposed to clean them because we're make, making another one. I don't know. Don't know much about springs yet. Uh, come on. That's sealed. Okay. Now we are trying to get the million little screws off of here. This will take a while. And then I might have some. This is common too, where they might solder a couple that might make it hard for you to. You have to unsolder a couple to really get it apart, but I hope not. I have had that happen though on one of the ones where I took apart. Okay. Push decently hard to start so I don't strip it and then and I can let up on the pressure once it's going. It's working pretty well. From big giant screws to the little tiny guys. I wonder what, you know, there's obviously other holes that, oh, these are. That's when I can feel something. Oh, so I'm able to figure out what. This one I can feel something. I should try to figure out what that is. As we take it apart, maybe that's one of the first things we'll look at. Why those holes have little black plastic poking through all of them, but not all of them. <laughs> gotta say loving my little rama works dish there for holding screws it, it's the, the material just looks and feels great smooth Makes a nice sound when you pop a screw in there. Simple pleasures, my friend, simple pleasures. Uh -oh. That one is not doing what I asked. This one either. Losing my mojo here. Gotta take great care on those ones. I might have stripped them. Yeah, that one too. I'm gonna put on my magnifying glasses for this part. I glossary because I cannot. 
Four. one up, see if it can grab it or not. It cannot. No. This is our tool, but it's, I need something in between these two. What sizes are these? Uh, what is this one? Is it Sayon? Maybe I have more of it? No, hold it. Crazy what I got in here is this, but I did. That's a damn shame to tell you. I just have to push with a lot of pressure on those other ones that are left. We'll see. I don't know. Maybe we go, but I gotta be able to feel it, you know? I can't feel anything. It's almost like it won't go down in there. What the heck? That one's stripped. This one has a chance. It definitely does not look stripped, but this is not the right size for it. I really need another screwdriver, but um, come on now, we got all the others. This should work for these, but it's not going well. Let's just see. This one's close, I think, but like it turns. It's done turning, so it's it's ready, I guess. It's out. Uh, this one, I think, maybe out. Not turning. And not turning. And that's sort of turning, I guess. Okay. There's that one. Okay, what do we got left? A few more. Let's see what we can do here. That one's just a beast. This one I think we can get. Frustrating. It's going to come off regardless of those, it looks like. So let us deal with this one. And then probably just lift it out. But remember, I was saying, let's see what this is, okay? Okay, so as you can tell, the yeah, it's it's just little bumps to help hold the 
apparatus to the plate. Um, so yeah, if we want to get the rest of it apart, we're going to have to get those screws out. So here's the bottom of the front. So again, I can clamp onto this if I wanted to paint the outer surface. Uh, you know, it's just thick plastic, basically. And I wonder where those screws were. The well, we put them in the last batch, but I don't know where they went. But okay, so we have to solve this part. We have to get these three screws apart. This one. I think it should be apart, but oh, this is let's look at this writing though. This looks cool. Puck A maxi switch. Puck A assembly number 2189. That's on the metal plate. Trippy. Um yeah, gotta get those three screws off. This plate's nice though. Yeah, and so again, when we get when I want to make a PCB, I guess I'm gonna have to use this as the template. Like the centers of these is the layout, um, and the stuff behind it I could use, I guess. But either one matters. Uh, I don't know which one's the right one that I'll need to use to rely on to do my measurements, but I can use that, or possibly the, the membrane underneath, we'll see. Um, oh, and the marbles all came out because I felt like doing that, okay. Uh, <coughs> what am I stuck on? One of them didn't come out or something. There's just one somewhere. Oh, here it is. Get back in your hole there, guys. Or come out. There's your sliders. We have to get these screws out. No ifs, ands, or buts. You got any more screwdrivers, Will? I guess I'm going to go find some. Something bigger than that, smaller than the other one. What's this one? Let me see. This is a number two. I don't know if this is the number one. It's probably smaller, but I need a number one, I think. Let's see if I can scrounge one here, but not sure we're gonna fuck out from that. Let's see what I found. I found two more, but I'm not sure what they are. One's a flathead, so that's useless. But this one might do the trick. This is a number one. Sweet. It's going to work for us, I can tell. Come on, we need it to, right? Okay.
Sweet, and then there were two. Let's give this one a shot. I don't think that one should be out already, but uh, it's just loosely spinning to me. Even with this one, it's turning. And that one's coming out. Okay. That one's definitely out. Okay, one to go. Come on. Well, can't explain that, but it's just spinning loosely, so let's see. we got to be able to separate it, probably. Jeez, everything else is out except, let's, let's get the, oh, there we go, okay. And here we go, we have a million sliders, here's the back. So like I said, this describes the layout. Uh, plasticky doesn't say too much on it. It says rev something right here. Let's see if we can read it. And the rev says three. And that's about it. Like I said, I was pretty impressed with uh, these things that held the. Uh, let me get. Uh, it held the slide on. Let me find a better one. Hold on. I think I gotta get the whole thing in the view so that uh, it'll focus. There you can see the little plastic grippers. They're in good shape. This is good, solid, pretty solid, good plastic. Uh, plastic. All right, uh, let's flip this bad boy over. We've got a bunch of sliders. we got our rubber domes. And then we got our, uh, our membrane. Here's the membrane where the electronics is. Uh, I've cleaned these before. Like I said, I'm not... I don't think I'm trying to restore this one. I want to actually make me a PCB for it. Is what I really want. We will. I don't know the best way to store these. Just leave them flat. But I'll, put, I'll set it in the box, keyboard box. Uh, so let's see how this went. So this is the plate. What is this right here? What is this? Oh, this is weird. It's a little, little legs, feet thing. Plastic. I have no idea why. Right here. Maybe it, I don't know. Let's put that here. So does this show our layout as well? It should, and it should help making a circuit board, but maybe not because the tech this used might be different than Alps and uh, Cherry Max, I have no idea. So it numbered all the, it's got numbers everywhere. Um, I don't know how to read it, like, 
What's it do when it gets to these dark spots? Do those the two sides to this? Does it come underneath when it does that? No, I don't think so. Well, maybe. I don't know. I'm going to learn more about this. Uh, so one thing that's kind of cool is you can see this notch fits here. Uh, this can hold, this is kind of what I'm talking about with the PCB, like it needs to, this plate needs to hold it down, so whatever that means. Uh, so I got to learn more about plate mount and whatnot, so like switches can plug right into the PCB and that's PCB mount, or they can snap into the plate and the PCB can attach below that. So since this plate was on the bottom, I guess I would probably, I don't know, I gotta figure that out because I, I, I think most of the stuff, I, I prefer the kind where there's holes in the plate, but that's not how this board was made, right? Like I could cut holes in this thing and then try to raise it up, but then what am I putting underneath? So it's probably better to leave it down and make a PCB that attaches to it somehow, but Use it uses the plate. I don't know how we're gonna use the plate. What are we gonna use to? So KiCad, I want to like make this layout with Cherry MX and Alps, and I'm assuming I can like kind of grab Hasu's library or whatever and put you know a whole board worth of uh, those individual switches in the right spots and spacing, and then figure out you know clean the rat's nest of all the traces so that it's clean as possible, and then get some boards ordered. But it sounds easy, but I know it's not. Um, yeah, this is kind of cool though. Uh, the other membrane one I did was a Keytronic. It had three sheets, like it had uh, two more sheets and with holes in different spots, so it kind of kept, I guess, layers, equivalent of helping you deal with layers or something. I don't know, but... So that's cool. And, uh, yeah, this plate is it's nice, it's hefty. Solid, beautiful, cool. All right, well now I have one more thing to, that's that's one I'd want to work on to start working on a PCB for that. Uh, I will gather up, uh, let's put all these stuff, let's get this stuff kind of, oops. There's something flop, but oh, I don't know what it was, but. Let's gather these up in a bag, shall we? And then we'll put the little screws in a little bag and then we'll have all our pieces. So that's what Maxi Switch Dome with sliders. Uh, Maxi switch dome with slider looks like when it's apart. You have one more little bag. Where to go? I'll grab another one, I guess. There's our last little bag. Crazy number of little screws there. So, what were those holding? Those were holding. Yeah, let's think about that. What was what were these little tiny guys doing? So here's this. So, like for example, there's a hole in the, the plastic sheet membrane right here. Imagine there's several of them. Let's see if we can line them up. Yeah, this one lines up with this hole. And then does it go all the way through to the plastic? Like, is that part of this too? Or... So if this is on here, and like this, does it actually get holes in it? Yeah, so if you see, there's holes every, so I imagine the screws were, were in these guys. So let's get one of these out. And... See if these go in this hole here. Just 
just to prove what is going on here. So it would be nice if I was making a PCB that it could reuse these holes, right? Or some of them. Not sure how many I would need for structural structural integrity, right? Uh, I cannot see what's going on here, but I want to know. Pretty dang sure that's what this is, but. That's because I'm trying to use a flathead for one, I'm blind. Maybe this is this is the wrong size, but but it's enough to tell what's going on here. Yeah, I'm sure that's what was going on. So so we could prove it by looking under there, but I'm gonna say that you know these holes in the plastic were where some of the metal plate screws were going through and screwing into those and let's see so let's keep this flipped and line this up with it I suppose why not and see the back in here uh so so it didn't hit every one of those but enough of them I don't want to be done. I'm rushing things here. I want to look again. So these holes, this was like this, and these are like this because this lines up. Okay, so this is how this is attached to the, the board. So if I flip this real quick and look for holes, there's one here, here up down so down up down up down up down up so where would that line up somewhere yeah down up down up so here's an up and there's a down So if here's an up and a down, if we flip it, we should see matching up down. Okay, I'm convinced now. That's how this attached. All right, that's good. This is kind of cool that usually these come in like smaller chunks, but this is like, this keyboard's in great shape actually. Shockingly, for not being that old. Um, so let's finish bagging this and then I'll show you how I put it back in its little storage. Not sure what the heck this is. I might ask somebody on Death Authority if they know what the heck it was for. Random stuff like that. It's kind of irritating. What is that and what's its purpose in life and why bother? No idea. Okay, so. A lot of parts here. Let's figure out the best way to. I think I'll be uh, using this for sure. Possibly this. I mean, I could use the plastic, but let's say that's less likely. Uh, here's the top and bottom, but let's go reverse like. This is how it would go anyway. So, no. It would be like that. It um, doesn't matter. I, guess, but I want access to that metal plate. And let's say I want access to those two. This in here, and then you get cramped for space on all the. This is my debate. I was wondering whether I'd have to uh, get switch to a bigger box because by the time you start adding in all these little. Maybe we're still over the size of this, but it shouldn't, right? But let's see, I hope I didn't miss any. Here's, I think I'll gather these in their own bigger bag. Just so we don't use them. I think we are missing one because there's the one with the feet. 
We have done that. Let's see, is there one more? Where is it? Here it is. Okay, so this is where the bag holding all the little bags. And then uh, here's our stuff. Again, I'd like to have easy access to this for what I'm going to try to do. So I'm going to try to get the other stuff in here in a way that you can stay, stay without doing it. thing I wanted to do I guess I kind of want to do the same thing with the silicon graphics so let's do it back to back since the goal of this is to kind of see how to well, a couple examples of maybe doing layouts for these older keyboards for making new PCBs for them with Cherry MX and Alps so next up I'm gonna grab a silicon graphics one and we'll take it apart Got like a six foot cable, at least no, six feet, I guess. All right, let's start the journey. Keycaps first. Again, this is a crappy uh, rubber dome with long stem built into the keycap. I did. Have, I do have more ideas. Like I'm like. I picture making the 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 part that goes on the keycaps. It's the Cherry MX stem part of this. Making just those, and then having it fit flush across the back of this, so it's gar guaranteed to sort of match the height. And then and then part of it goes in the inside though, like from flat, it goes inside. Then uh, glue it down to the top of the cap, like some kind of hard something that would harden and glue. And then it should be. Uh, level and square that's the goal the only problem is to make it level and square so with this particular one I guess the barrel would have to fit inside and maybe the glue would go in there and it would just have to be flush with this this top of the, the top of this key part of this stem I guess um, come on man I think it has to be doable to get more life out of these things so that'd be one where you wouldn't no, that would let these keycaps that are gray and be nicely somehow nicely be used on Cherry MX or something. That'd be that'd be nice. Otherwise, they are doomed to die. Because I, we, and the rest of the planet do not want to use a rubber dome. The world has voted. The people that care about keyboards in the world have voted. And rubber domes are the bane of all existence. So it's actually, I don't know, it's just strange because this is quality, medium, you know, this is a decent build quality for a keyboard case and there's got to be a metal plate in there, but then you got rubber domes just getting it, junking it all up. So we're going to find a way to fix that. We're going to find a way to reuse these caps. I was always an admirer of silicon graphics, you know, it was used for leading edge. I had 
you know, 3D computer graphics in 1987 in college, and Silicon Graphics was a name back then, and after that, and uh, I never did go to SIGGRAPH, but that stuff was the stuff they you did on those machines was the coolest stuff you've ever seen for that time before personal computers had graphics i guess my Commodore amiga had graphics and it was being used for some 3d rendering and stuff too but okay interesting that the rubber domes are yellow inside this I haven't seen that, so it'll be interesting when we take it apart. Actually, I should check if we're still streaming. <laughs> uh, let me see. Yeah, it looks like we are. Okay. Earlier I had trouble because I, I, if I put my mouse in the corner, it locks the screen, and then that kills OBS for some reason. I haven't done that in this video session, so that's good. I'll try to make a prototype of what I'm talking about for, uh, oh, so this just came out, the stabilizer came out uh, with it. It's got some lube, dried up, kind of crusty lube, lube it looks like. And I don't know if I broke these, and it doesn't feel like it, but I gotta, anything more than one U, I should just wait till the end and focus a little better. Uh, except for one and a half U is fine. <laughs> Anything over one and a half U will wait. The dumb tray is bugging me because it rattles. I'm going to fix it. Hold on. Bump the table occasionally. Mm -hmm. and Rattles up. Roasting pan, but no more. It's not, table's not touching it. Good old silicon graphics. I was pretty excited to stumble upon these two. This is really a nice gray. These, these gray accents are the bomb, but, but how are you going to use something like that? It's a piece of crap. We'll clean them up. We will make a prototype of what I'm saying. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I'll figure it out. Make something out of resin or something? I don't know. Let's see. Got to watch more artists and keycap videos and see what they do. How do they get the Terry MX stem on their, when they're making their little molds and their sculpting stuff? To see. Imagine I can. I don't know. I have ideas, is what I'm saying. I have ideas. I'm trying to implement them, but there's not enough time in the day, you know? Get home from work, get tired. Do what little you can. And, and it's kind of good though, because I guess then he makes you think about your ideas when you're not, well, during the time when you can't sit and do the hands on stuff. This little one and a half of you should be safe. Yep, but I don't know about the, that one a little bit. Uh, I think these are safe, they're no slider. Yeah. I don't know about that one, I'll see. That one's safe. Really is a nice color. Like I said, color scheme is great. <clears throat> I love it. I haven't seen the uh, granite, the recent group by for G, I don't know, GMK granite, I think. Or, but I, if I, in, my, in my mind, I think it looks like this. Uh, Silicon Graphics did a good job with the colors.
All right, we're getting down to just the stabilized keys. Got the function there. Yeah, I like this idea I have of trying to make new PCBs for these because it would be reusable, you know, just like Hasu and them made KeyCAD reusable, you know, here's what the size of a switch to put on the PCB, the size, the, you know, what the circuitry looks like for that. <clears throat> and uh, I'm just trying to go up one notch and say, here's what the layout of a PCB that fits this silicon graphics model. And then anyone, you know, if you make a library of those, then anyone that has one could go print that board and mod it to be a uh, cherry mix or Alps. It's, maybe it's already been done. I keep thinking I got this cool new idea here, but I don't know if people have done it or not. Okay, let's see if that one had no stabilizer. This one's not going to either. Oh, okay. Uh, Let's see, let's try this one. Yes, and it's, when I've done it both times now, the, the piece comes out with the, it's like beeswax or something. Looks like earwax, but the grease they used on the stabilizers. So again, these keycaps are not double shot, but they are medium thickness. The uh, thickness is decent compared to the last couple boards I've been playing with. They, that are just kind of wimpy and crappy and tinny, light, empty sounding. These are a little more solid, medium thickness. Maybe. They sound good when you drop them, you know, and show them they've got some heft to them. Okay. It goes for me to grab this waxy stuff, but what are you gonna do? Wear gloves, but I didn't feel like it today. Yeah, another one. This one didn't make it out of the there we go. Let's see if these have stabilizers. I'm guessing they do since they paid attention to quality and most of the other stuff. Yep. But these are good. Also have stabilizers. Cool. I kind of like it when I have multiple boards of the same kind because then I feel safer to goof up or mess mess one up. So I have two of these. So push comes to push comes to shove, we can break this one because there's another one. There's half of it. Okay, we got a long stabilizer and we got a spring. Okay. Pretty sturdily made. I don't think I've broke anything so far. And there we go. There's what the space bar looks like. The focus is so sad on my setup now. I don't know why I used to be. My iPhone is great. Uh, these webcams are horrible at it. This is the one I have, and then it's like my best 100 bucks till I find one that I think they all have the problem actually. So it's dirty. Uh, let's put the keycaps away and. Get on to taking the, see if we can get the case apart. <clears throat> I actually don't have a box for this. I haven't boxed this yet. We just did, I just did the video on the uh, recycler haul just earlier today and haven't had time to put them in boxes yet and label them and research what switches are called, what the switches are called. Uh, 
And we'll see if it needs to start a wiki updating. That kind of stuff. These are nice, the uh, thickness. I like that. Thickness and color is great. Switch type, horrible. Why, oh, why did you do that, Silicon Graphics? You went ugly early. Rubber dome, please. Maybe you're the fault. Maybe you're the cause of why the world went to rubber dome. If only we knew. Uh, so there's the keycaps. Let's get a little bit of here, guys. I need to find my medium size snack bags. I'm going to go get some out of the garage since I don't think I have any here. So we'll put these little guys in here. And, get, and then I'm going to get a snack size bag. I actually can get one from the kitchen, but I'm going to see if I got a whole new container of them and then I'll put it down here so I don't have to keep getting them out of the kitchen so that it can hold this together. So give me one sec to grab that. Grabbed a few from the kitchen. Oh, I was talking to myself. Sorry. Man. So we'll put <coughs> this larger stabilizer in here and the rest of them with it. And there's a the part of our little kit here. Uh, oh, God, that's gross. Oh, please, it's so sad. <sighs> okay. Let's get rid of this. Whoever this guy is, I shouldn't be showing people's names on YouTube that didn't ask for it. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's, maybe it's a lab location. Anyways, that's gone. Cool. Oh, usually if there's yellowing i don't know if that's intentional like look at this gray uh, and then look at this color it's greenish late and this is dark grayish so i wonder if the case yellowed i don't think so i think it's just two different parts and intentional coloring between the two parts but although the bottom of the edge of this outer part when we take them apart i'm going to I think it might be yellow. Like, like since I have two, I could do the retrograde thing, and it's probably worth it. I'm thinking for this because they look appear to maybe have yellowed on the top. to look at something like that. I'm gonna get some disease from whatever stuff has lived on this keyboard for the last 20 years, 30 years. I forget what we dated this at, uh, 93 or 92 maybe. And we looked up the, we looked up the FCC code. Come on. There we go. Four down and four to go. Looks like. Like I said, quality case for sure. 
kind of like this is interesting the way the two they design the top and bottom piece. It's kind of interesting to see what it looks like when we take it apart. And here we go. So let's see. So here's the top. This is our layout that I dream of making a PCB for to fit inside here. Yeah, like, so here's your answer to bromine yellowing. Like, this color is not this color. It's one piece of plastic. So this is actually quite bad. It's very green. So instead of yellow, it looks more green. And But that's what happened to this plastic when the gray faded due to the bromine. So we definitely want to... Um, See if we can fix that. Bring out this color. I think it's more attractive. I'm not sure if it's possible, but it doesn't hurt to try. Okay. So this is another one that's curved, you know, so I don't know what that means to us yet. But so here's a screw. Okay, so maybe this is the only screw holding something down at the moment. Let's find out. That'd be nice if it's the only one that separates the... Is that one different? Yeah. Yeah, these are pointy screws and this one's not. Now what? Oh yeah. Now we can get at stuff a little better. Oh, okay, so here's... <coughs> Let's get this guy off. Mm. Looks like just two for this. And then, just like our last board, we just pull those out. Let's try to get them back in. This looks like it should come out. Wait. Dare I? No, I don't think it does. Yeah, it's soldered on, so like right here, but uh, what else we got? Let's get our six foot cord up here and take a look at this stuff. Xylos 1118, RT101, and uh, some J's and some L1's and C4-5. Not sure what we're seeing. Let's flip it over and see what the soldering on the back looks like and the traces. I have no idea what it's doing. What's this part? This is ground, I guess, because it would be touching the case. I don't know. All right, let's take this and set it aside. By the way, it was a, uh, looks like a PS2. Uh, okay, where are we at? Here is the bottom part of the case. Uh, this is raised. Again, this is what I'd hoped. Like if I do do serra coating, which I'm planning on, uh, you know, I could clamp onto these and then I, it won't affect the finish. I'm able to fully get at the spray surface. So I'm pretty excited about that. I wonder if I, these come out very easy. Here's the internals of it. Not sure, but I'm not inclined to take it out at the moment. Um, yeah, the bottom's a beautiful color. We just need that top. To, which is yellow to get back to that original color and then man we'd really be talking so this is a solid piece very similar to the last one we just did uh, you know, almost identical you got this coming out you got this although the last one was flat this one's curved uh, again I mean PCB's not gonna bend like that so I don't know if I have to make like little strips and then like link them together so that it can kind of go chink 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 it's a very slight grade right but uh, it's still a I don't know it's like four degrees angle of the 
I don't know. Maybe it can be flat and no, I don't know. I need more info. So that that would be sad about this one. Like it's bent, kind of like the Apple Pro keyboard. It's bent uh, or curved, you know. Like so. My dream is those are harder notches to what I'm suggesting we do to revitalize some of these older keyboards. So the Delphi one I have is flat. That'll be likely the first attempt, and we'll go from there. Okay, let me bag the outer screws before we start on these inner screws. Inner plate screws. So this is a mixture of outer plate or case screws and the controller board where the keyboard cable came out the back. And then Uh, let's see, I'll set it right here for now and I'll set the extra bag there and then I'll start our million. Wow, a lot of screws we're going to get to. But it looks like you know, we're headed to right where we just were with the last keyboard. Main difference being that this one's bent. So that's a challenge for making a new PCB for sure. But I just have to try some ideas or come up with some ideas. Maybe each row going across is it it tilts as it goes, and then you just kind of three screws in each row to so each row is not like flopping around or it'd be solidly held to this plate. Is what I'm envisioning. But then you look at the cost of making a. I guess the cost is per square inch instead of. So if I do one solid PCB that's this dimension or four or five rows that add up to the same dimension, I wonder if it's the same price. I guess it should be. At least these are working with this screwdriver, so they're bigger screws, and I think I'll have an easier time getting them out of here. Let's not forget to look at you know what they're attaching to if there's plastic under here. I think the holes will go through the membrane, but then they're gonna and stick to this plastic outer part. Oh yeah, we're gonna see the yellow rubber dome too when we get in, in here. That'll be interesting. I haven't seen that before. Lots of screws. We might even start mounting up in my tray over there before we get done. Run out of real estate in the tray. Not quite that many, but she's a lot. I wonder if I should get an electric hand, I mean, uh, yeah, battery driven, hand powered on to unscrew these. There's some tiny ones that, modern ones that I haven't tried, but I bet they're. Maybe their torque's not enough to do this. I don't know. Might be handy for a task like this, though. That last, well, yeah. Maybe the last board, too, that we did. Yeah, it's shocking how similar these two are in, in essence. They exactly prove my point. They're old, solidly made board uh, keyboards, but with crappy switch choice or cheap, horrible cheap switch choice. Or lack of a switch, I guess. Whatever. And then we want to fix that because there's a lot of beauty in these old, old guys. Okay. Only 10 more to go. That was just a guess, I didn't count. Getting these edge ones first. Mm -hmm. 
All right, and then there were two. I wonder what these are. Let's look this up. I don't know. I guess something on the. So let's see if this was the space bar. So this is the back of the bottom where the space bar is. Let's see. This is the. That makes no sense. Why? Why are these? I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. All right, that's the last on the bottom, I think. Sometimes or often there's one on the top, so let's flip it over. And there's not. So here we go. Boy, I'm glad I took that off because these are individual rubber domes, I think. Yeah. Kind of like the Apple Pro. So when you so when you go to a curved one, that my other curved one, which is the Apple Pro, instead of doing a sheet of rubber domes, they do individual. And I wonder if it has to do with the curve. It's likely that it, it's, it could be a coincidence, but, or it could be a reason why you have to do that. So similar to the last board, there's a, you know, the screws went into these, some of the, some or all of these holes to keep the plastic on. This plastic is much flimsier, but uh, it's held to that steel plate. So who cares? This will be fun, huh? Let's see if we can directly put them in the uh, new baggies we got. Is this the right size? Probably for something like that. Uh, let's see if we can just do it. Half the fun spilling it though, isn't it? Let's spill it. I hope they don't go bouncing all over there. It's kind of fun to see that. Drum roll, please. Yeah, that was worth it. So this is more like, this has multiple sheets. Like I was saying, the Keytronic one I did a couple months back. Did, uh oh, here's an LED, there's two of them. I suppose we need three. So let's keep an eye out for that. I hope I don't drop anything on the floor. Yeah, didn't notice that, I'll we'll have to. See if we can find the third one. These feel so weird when you hold them. They're just an oddity, like in this weird shape. And that's how tactility works. So whoever came up with it, it's a great idea. The rubber dome collapses it after a certain amount of force. So they have their place, I suppose. I'm a Topra fan, and that involves the rubber rubber domes but in a better way than this. Uh, I have an FC 660C Leopold that I love with a heavy six case around it from Noah Bauer. There's your yellow uh, rubber domes. That's interesting, right? Uh, still not seeing the the other diode for the LED. For. So, there should be, I'm guessing, three of these. Yep. So, there's two layers and then a plastic clear one in between. This just gives, it prevents the traces from touching and allows the trace, allows it to go through and where it wants to to get to the next layer due to the holes. And then, then you're on the next layer. So, Interesting cheap alternative to doing stuff. Here's a, a rev something. So let's see if we can get it to focus on it. There we go. And there's another one on the bottom layer. Uh, yeah, let's get this up there. Come on. Focus. That's ouchy. I can't. I guess maybe I can hold it like this a little bit. Mm. 
Oh, come on, there we go. Okay. Uh, so, here's those two. Maybe it was just to hold, help hold the this in place. Is this, but then those, those two posts, it's likely they're just to help hold the, the memory in place. Yeah, okay. I, I'm not liking, I mean, I can use this as a schematic, but it's harder for me to look at. But I guess, I suppose if I look hard enough, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 3 more, and I don't know what that is, but. And what? Where's the space bar? So it gets harder to, I guess, there's two. So wherever these dots are, we'll get, sorry, the light's bad on this, but, um, you know, wherever the dots are, let's, here's the two keys, and then here's the shift, and then here's the bottom row. I guess I can kind of see it, but, uh, well, what other choice do I have? I guess the plastic, this is the layout. This is probably better for spacing, so. I may use that instead. Um, yeah, and then let's get to the let's get to this plate. Again, nice solid piece of aluminum or steel or whatever it is. I guess since it's heavy, it's steel. But uh, it's got some grease or leakage it's there. Hardly, it's hard to tell. I guess you could see it kind of machine there, but some above this. Uh, not sure, but yeah, this is wonderful. It'd be nice to reuse the parts and get a different PCB in there. All right, that was basically two boards that were fairly identical in what they're trying, to, what they used to achieve achieve their thing. Rubber domes on. Uh, Membrane. Um, sad, I only found two of these guys, but that's fine. I'll put them in with the, these screws. And tiring out from the uh, teardowns here, and we're about to wrap up. Let's get some of this maybe in the same bag. And we'll just put a bigger bag around this. Yeah, we got one more bag this stuff. So I will put those in here. Kind of keep them together a little better. Keep them together with the the parts of the keyboard. I don't have a box yet, but I'll work on that. Okay, um, that's it for this session. I'm tired. I hope you enjoyed looking at crappy rubber domes for a couple hours. I know I did. I don't want to type on them, but I like seeing what was inside. That's it for now. Have a good weekend or life, since you might watch this not on a weekend. Talk to you soon.